so in this tutorial I'm going to talk about single line stick fonts. Um, what I'm talking about specifically is cutting a cutting a letter or something at the single width of the kerf. Um, the problem with Windows and single line stick fonts is that it, Windows doesn't uh, play with them very nicely so I'll show you what I mean. I've installed some fonts that are considered, considered stick fonts um, for instance, if you go to Cam, I think they called them Cam Bam. Oh, and apparently I uninstalled it, so let me show these to you. So if I bring up my browser and type Cam Bam Stick Fonts, the very first thing um, from MrRace.com is this uh, page. He created all of these stick fonts, and you can see what I mean by just a single line you're going to cut that width. He created all of these stick fonts and I actually like these um, and the download right here is at the very bottom I'm going to download the file and that file is on my desktop so I'm going to extract it and inside of this directory here's all the fonts you can take all these you can copy and paste them into your local disk windows fonts directory so I'll paste all of those in there and apparently I do have them in there so let me go make sure I have them installed so bring up Torchmate, go to File, Install, Fonts, Search Now. And you can see here's those Kanban ones I just installed. Install all. It's quicker for me to just install everything again than to select the ones I want to install. So now if I come and try to type in one of these fonts, I'll highlight all of this and go up to Cam. Let me see if I can find. Oh yes, I, I remember they start with a number actually. So cam bam normal. So I'll select this and we've got a stick font here, sort of. The problem is is Windows doesn't parse these correctly and I have not found a good way around this. Um, so this may look like they're stick fonts but let me zoom in on this. I'm going to double click on this line. Uh, sorry, i got to break this first. It's still text. So control B to break it or it's uh, a range break path. So now if I come in and zoom in on this, I double click on this, I take one of these points, drag it out, hit apply, you notice that it is not a single line, there are two lines there and that's Windows closing this font up and, and just messing it up. So I've been thinking to myself how can how can users that do not have the ProText module um, for Torchmake, how can they come up with their own fonts for, you know, these single line text fonts? There's a few methods that I've come up with. So, the first one is, oh, just a side note, those Kanban fonts, if I try to apply a path to those, it will not work. I have, I have not been able to get uh, a tool path to work on it. Um, okay, so the very first thing, for those of you that have Bobcad or possibly any other AutoCAD um, let me show you one of those tricks and the rest of these tricks won't include other programs like this but this one will so Bobcad for instance comes with some of its own stick line fonts um, now apparently the graphics card that I'm using it doesn't play very nice with Bobcad so it's going to look a little funny until I get a new graphics card um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Bobcad fonts here and I know that these first uh, nine fonts listed here are stick fonts and actually most of them look weird except for the first one in my opinion. But what I'm going to do is if I needed a stick font I'm going to go ahead and uh, type something in here that's say this is Bobcad stick font one. Okay. I'm going to say vectorize, click OK. Now this is the part that looks funny. Don't worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and click right here. I'm going to file save as we'll say Bob CAD save it as a DXF okay I'm gonna go ahead and close this and now what I'm going to do is double click on my Bobcad file which is right here and zoom out and this is what I typed in on Bobcad now Bobcad stick fonts these spaces come up as these uh, lines so I come in here and delete these lines stick font one that's right I had a one on the end I couldn't remember what I did there okay so after oh let me break that up 
kill that, kill that. So this, each of these uh, letters is now, um, like this one for inches is 53 pieces. If I just highlight all these, go to arrange, uh, try close graphics, um, connect path, whatever. I accept the default. So now when I click on this, it's, okay, let me break this up, control B. It, what it did is it did it for all of them. So I'm going to highlight this, arrange, connect path. And basically you can go and do that to each of these. But now this is one single object. Um, so without the ProText or whatever module it is that they have from uh, Torchmate, you have to try to work around it. So I could work around it. This isn't bad. Okay. Next option. Um, if you go to signtorch.com, for instance, let's do that. Signtorch.com. Gary, I forget his last name, out here in Signtorch, has created his own uh, website with a bunch of graphics and stuff that you can buy. But over on the left hand side, you see this DXF fonts. He has some different fonts you can install, but this very first one, he has a stick font. And if you go and look at the stick font, basically you'll get a file that includes all of these. And what, this isn't like a normal font. Like I said, Windows messes it up. It tries to close these paths and everything, and Windows just doesn't let you play with stick fonts very nicely. At least I haven't found a way to. So, when you buy this file, which I actually did for the sake of this tutorial, um, let me go into my CNC folder, Sign Torch. I think I called it font. So if I go and open up this font, um, here it is. Basically, it's all laid out. Um, if you want to write anything, you have to go and duplicate these letters. So let's say, um, let's just say test. So I'm going to grab the T, Control D to duplicate it. So you can see how this isn't any fun. Um, you can get the job done, but let's Control D this. Then you have to go and try to line all these up and space them out correctly. So this test, I'm going to say Alt highlight everything, Alt K. Let's say line up uh, on the bottom. So everything's lined up on the bottom. And now, and apparently, that's all separate pieces. So let's make this one piece. Um, arrange, make path. Arrange, <clears throat> make path. Highlight these again, control K, that'll line them up again. Now, if you want to spread them out over a certain distance to make sure they're all even, you can create a box or something about this range. Highlight all of these, shift, left, shift and left click on the box, alt K, do my distribute. That looks a little funny to me. Um, let's bring it a little closer to the T. And there you got a stick font. Um, you have to do the copy and paste method there. And that'll get you. That'll get the job done. Um, as far as I'm aware, that's the only font he sells that is a stick font. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and grab this, pull it out of the way or whatever. Now, I was trying to find ways to. Uh, I, I mean, I just kept trying different stick fonts. Let me go find another one. I have another one. Let's call this uh, another test. Okay. Again, remember this is the, the Cambam font, and it looks great, but it's really getting messed up by Windows. So um, let's go to double click on this. And I found another font called Machine Tool Sans Serif. Well, if I go and click on this, Machine Tool Sans Serif, it comes out a lot closer. Um, you can see that Windows, is close, Windows has closed the paths, but it's a lot more workable. So if I were to double click on this object, oh, let me break it all, sorry, control B. So these are all separate. When I break the object, I lose a little bit. Do you notice that on the end? Let me do control Z. The end, look at all these. I'm gonna break it again. You lose some stuff, unfortunately. Lost some on the T, lost some on the A. Um, and then you still have to go and uh, try to, to fix all of this. So break this path here. Oh, sorry, shift click left shift click right click break the path come in here and try to clean it up and apparently a path is not broke completely broken there we go 
So you can come in here and play with it. That isn't any fun either. Um, for the CAD light users, I have not figured out anything easier than the copy and paste from a Sign Torches font, for instance. Or if you wanted to create your own fonts, you can come in here and do that. Um, there is another trick with Sign Torch. I've, I, I think this font is the Arial font. So what I would do is I can come in here and make sure we have the Arial. And I don't know what I just clicked on. Let me do that again. Arial selected, so we'll say, um, and Arial selected, and it's one inch tall on the font height. Okay, so we'll say this is a test. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and break that. Control B. So now we'll take the we'll take a T. Control D. Shift left click here. Control K, Alt K, I mean, we're going to say center, center. Actually, let's say center vertically, but make it hit the bottom. Okay, so now we're going to come down here, we're going to grab the H, Control D, and left click up here, Control K. And you can see what I'm doing. Um, now, one thing you will have to do beforehand is probably make each of these its own. Um, object so arrange make path G arrange make path control M if you want to use the hotkey see how these are all separate little lines and letters um, you'll have to do that otherwise when you go and center it this is going to happen but once you've done that basically all of these will line up perfectly in this font and it'll have the spacing for you um, again that's not a whole lot of fun, but I don't think you have a lot of options, honestly, with uh, with CAD Lite. However, I haven't tried SketchUp or anything like that. SketchUp's widely available, and maybe I'll uh, see if that'll work. Now, this is a trick for full versions of CAD users. I just discovered this. I actually think it's really cool. Um, you see your scan tools here? We're going to use the center line option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create... Sorry, text. I need text. Let's go select my favorite text or whatever. Let's say um, this is a test, okay? And for this, I'm gonna let's change it to well, no, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it simple for this time. Watch this. You come and click on the scan tools and you have your center line option. Click on your center line option. And look, it created the single line text font for you inside of that. Now if I come in here and click on the lettering and delete it, you've got your single font right there. Isn't that cool? Um, now, I don't know how it's going to try to cut this particular path uh, if you go and make a tool path on it. So if we highlight that, make a tool path, show tool paths only, I'd have to put that in the machine to see how, how it's going to cut. Um, for those of you that are questioning the T's, how does this work um, where it's crossing a path that you're already going to cut? Well, if you go and look through my uh, history of my videos on YouTube, you'll see that I do have single line fonts being cut. And when you it, it, the the curve is width on my particular machine at least is small enough that it doesn't have any problem arcing around right across that and uh, continuing to cut without a problem. Okay, so now let's go and uh, let's do another test. Let's grab another font. Okay, so hello world. I kind of give you an idea what uh, industry I work in if you recognize that. Okay, so let's go and uh, change this. For those of you who don't know, I, I work in the software industry. Okay, so let's go into let's give a let's get a weird font. Um, Artbrush looks pretty cool when you go and cut it out for things. Um, let's say I want to do this in a single line font, which I don't think would look very cool, um, but we'll do it anyway. Let me bump the uh, current up on these so they aren't overlapping each other. Okay, so now we're going to just come down here, do the center line again. It's going to take a little longer because this font isn't as uh, nice and smooth as the previous one. Okay, so now we'll delete this. And here you go. You have another set of uh, fonts. One thing you could probably do is if you wanted to go and uh, sell fonts like Gary out at Sign Torch, you could probably come in here, pick a font, 
let's pick another one. Uh, let's pick uh, Serpentine, Deep Bold. I like this font. And okay, let's make me some money. By the way, do not break path on this when you go to uh, run the center line on it. If you do, you're going to get some weird results. Just leave the font right as it is. Center line it. Okay. Now, this is pretty wacky looking. Um, I haven't gone and played with this a whole lot. There's probably some fonts that are going to be a lot better than other, others. Um, some of this would be okay. That's kind of crooked. I don't know. Depending on how the size of the font you use, that may not come out uh, too badly. This M is kind of weird. Um, you could take it and try to arrange. Um, no, I don't need to connect path. I'm going to convert all of these to polyarch. Right now, I wanted to do a reduce nodes on this. You can't do that until all of them are polyarchs. Um, right now, they're probably a mix of polygon and polyarch, or they're all polygon. So if I convert these to polyarch, notice that when I go to arrange, I can now do a reduce nodes on there. I'm just going to, going to accept the default. Um, it smoothed it out a little bit. You may have to come in and tweak some things like this, like, do you really want this point? You know, you can make it a little more even. Some of this is kind of ugly. Um, delete points. You, you can come in here and clean it up. Anyway, I just wanted to show this. Those, those of you that maybe have other CAD programs like AutoCAD or Rhino. Actually, I think Rhino has options. I've seen options out on Google for Rhino to, um, to utilize Windows fonts or fonts stick fonts stored in the Windows fonts directory and to be able to use them correctly and make them into stick fonts. Um, I don't have Rhino so I can't test that. I don't have AutoCAD or SolidWorks or anything like that. I have uh, Bobcad and, and TMCAD. So you might be able to take uh, QCAD from like Linux and do something like that. I haven't uh, gone and played with that enough to see if it, it handles the stick fonts fine. I'm assuming that it does. Um, so there's going to be more options out there besides these, but I just I wanted to bring this up to kind of show you what your options were. If you have another CAD program, it's going to be easy, um, relatively. Um, if you don't have another CAD program, there are things out here like Sign Torch's uh, lettering you can go and buy, and you can copy and paste them and make, make the signs that you need. And then for those of you that have the full version, you can come and use the center line option. Some fonts are going to play nicer than others. Um, but I mean, you can work around this. And again, this is this is a kind of an ugly one. Let, let's just try one more. We're gonna go do another common font. Font Times New Roman is pretty common. Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Times New Roman. Times New Roman. Okay. So let's do the center line on that. Now, this is interesting. Notice uh, this would probably come out well for V carving. If you wanted to do V carving uh, on your woodworking, this to me looks like this would come out really well because your V carving would come in and duplicate these paths. Plasma, I think that would look a little weird. Um, you probably have to, let me try breaking that up. If I, Plasma, I did a control B on that to break it up. In fact, let's just do the whole thing, control B. You come in here, clean that up, maybe delete all these points. I thought I deleted them, maybe not. Okay, delete those points. Okay, apply that. Same thing here, you can delete this one. Come and delete all these points. You can you can you can spend some time and come and clean that up, and I accidentally deleted one point too far, so let's just drag it back down. Anyway, you have these kind of options. Um, I tried to figure out what I could uh, that's free for those of you that don't have, you know, the uh, full version of the ProTex, which, you know, I don't either. So um, I'd show you that, but I, I just don't have the full version. And, and I don't use single stick fonts often enough to uh, warrant the purchase of it. And again, uh, what I typically do is I can go into Bobcad and basically create what I need, export it, and bring it into here, and, and I'm fine. So if any of you have any other options, um, feel free to add it to the comments on YouTube, and, and those that are re reviewing this video can actually uh, go and take a look at that and see if there are, are you know other options, other ways of accomplishing this. Anyway, hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching.